Welcome into the Kiwi Football Fix. We are two games down and just seven days to go in the OFC World Cup qualifying campaign for the All Whites. We'll talk all about that. We'll go inside the All Whites camp with Logan Rogerson very, very shortly. But first of all, it's a warm welcome to a good friend of mine and a, a, a former All White <laughs> goalkeeper and a, a current Sky Sport commentator, Jacob Spoonley, the one and only Spoon. How are you, mate? You're just back from Qatar. How was it? Oh, it was great, mate. Yeah, I've, I've flown in, uh, arrived at 4 a.m. this morning, so we're on limited sleep. I am hydrated, I'm awake, but I'm not <laughs> promising anything above that, Goran. Um, in terms of, I don't mean this to sound like um, you know, somebody about to conduct a cavity search at the airport, but what was the nature of your trip to Qatar? Interesting, interesting way to, uh, <laughs> to coin that question. Um, so I, in my role as part of uh, the PFA, I need to go up and see the boys regularly and we haven't been able to do that because of travel restrictions. So this uh, was a great opportunity to not only go up and see them, but also to see a huge number of them, 31 players in the squad. So ticking yeah. a lot of boxes there, Grant. All right, so um, in terms of Qatar as a whole, because look, the, the whole reason we're there, we're trying to get to the World Cup later in the year, November. Is Qatar ready to host the FIFA World Cup of 2022? Well, you're exactly right. Um, it's exciting because it's where we want to be. So to have the qualifying tournament there is great. Um, it's going to be different. Uh, so everything uh, with, to do with the World Cup is going to be in the city. So there's eight stadiums, I think, in and around the city. Um, we went and saw a number of them. They look fantastic. Uh, but different, I think, is going to be the way that this World Cup is going to be described, Goran. And if you were thirsty, where do you get a drink from? Very good question. Uh, did a little bit of research and couldn't find anything at oh. the time. But um, no, absolutely. I think it's going to go through a bit of a transformation uh, to prepare for the World Cup. And hopefully, mate, uh, we might be up there for a beer, which would be good. That would be nice. You haven't just brought yourself in for the Kiwi Football Fix. No. You've managed to bring in this lovely little number. I yes. don't know if you can see this, Tia. I'm just going to sort of lift it up like that. What way am I going? This way. Explain that. Well, if you flip it around, uh, what you'll see on the back... Um, from my detour to San Diego, at the last minute, I went up and saw Nico Boxall and Kyle Adams as well. But uh, I was very fortunate in that they gave me an away kit for the San Diego Loyal. We've got yeah. a home one as well that hopefully will be given away a little bit later on. But that is a really cool shirt because it's got the print of downtown San Diego and on the back it's got three cool signatures, two Kiwis and Kyle Adams and Nico Boxall. But importantly for a lot of Kiwi football fans, Landon Donovan. Uh, is also on there. He's the coach Beautiful. of San Diego. Uh, so I think we'll be giving that away later in the show. Yep, find out how we do that a little bit later on. Stay with us here on the Kiwi Football Fix. But for right now, let's talk about this all-whites performance. Two of them up first against PNG and then a, a very comprehensive performance against Fiji, winning that one 4-0. From your mastermind, how did you see both encounters? How, how have they gone so far? Because they have qualified for the semi-final at this point. Yeah, and I think that's the, probably the punchline to this all, is that we've got through the first phase. Yes, we've got another game to go against New Caledonia, but they'll um, be a little bit downhearted. They played well, I thought, in their first game, but um, I don't think they'll pose as much of a challenge for the All Whites as PNG and Fiji did. In the first game, I think we saw a really structured PNG side that held the All Whites at bay, and they should feel pretty happy with that. And for our boys, uh, they got the goal, they got the result, and they moved on. You mentioned it earlier, uh, a vast number of All Whites needed for this tournament, given the tournament parameters. It falls outside the window, it falls inside the window. We need a whole bunch of people uh, available for the country. It was an understrength, undermanned All White side that took to the field against PNG. Your thoughts on, on what that understrength All Whites lineup did? I thought they looked pretty good. They looked really confident, um, considering that they were, as you put it, maybe not the first 11 that Danny Hayes got in mind. Um, they took to the field, they showed patience against the PNG side that really perhaps showed more structure than we've seen from island teams in the past. Uh, and I think as well, um, we saw good performances from players that were returning to the side. So yes, we had the likes of younger players and players that were playing in New Zealand and Australia to fill those important roles. But then we also got to see the likes of Costa Barbarousas coming back in. And I think he had a, an immediate impact. I'd just like to pick you up. Uh, on something you just said, because it's not Costa Barbarousas. Controversial, you're right, Brian. It's, uh, it's actually Costas Barbarousas, isn't it? Place for Darren Hay as well, which has been interesting. <laughs> Look, things got uh, massively uh, better 
for the All-Whites in that match against Fiji because mm. we, we saw some of the uh, the players returning, the likes of Chris Wood up front, um, and it was a, a more comprehensive, more composed performance. Your thoughts on what they did to Fiji? Yeah, I think the returning, uh, like the likes of the returning Chris Wood were really important, gave uh, the All-Whites a lot more confidence. And I think the plan was really clear. Um, this Fiji team, they were going to sit deep. They played a 4-2-3-1. That ended up being a back six at times. So there was a, there was a lot of players in and around that Fijian box that blocked the All-Whites in their, in their passing channels. But the boys knew that once they got to 60 minutes, the game was going to open up. They saw uh, against New Caledonia that Fiji can't go the full 90, and we saw that play out in that second game. So with Chris Wood, who importantly broke Vaughan Kovney's record, that was just reward for a huge amount of loyalty to the shirt. Um, but at the same time, I think at the other end, Ollie Sale. What an, what, a, what an impact. Oh, here we had. go. The goalkeeper talking about the goalkeeper. <laughs> what a surprise. <laughs> who, who's struck by this? No, no, please. Tell us about Oli Sale. I, having gone into camp and seen um, everyone there and, and just seen how composed Oli is at the moment, I, I think um, the fact that he made his debut um, and has kept two clean sheets and only had to come up with one save, which you're right, Gwon. Yeah. It's not really remarkable, but um, the way in which they've managed that back line along with the likes of Winston Reid and two formations as well, it's got to be said, changing that variety that we're seeing from Danny Hay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, really impressed with Ollie how he's gone, yet to concede at international level. What do you think it means to Chris Wood to claim that goal-scoring record? Uh, the Vaughan Kovney record stood for a long, long time and it's taken Chris Wood 12 years to knock it off. So... What will it mean to him? I think people see Woodsy, they see that he's had a wonderful career overseas. Um, he's obviously come in and um, had an impact at the All Whites level. But I think there's kind of a, what, what's more important, your club football or um, international football? And I think what people don't understand is how important the Silver Fern is to Chris Wood. When he puts on the shirt, you see how frustrated he is when he misses chances. He knows the impact that he has in this side and how he can bring younger players through and create that next generation. And for him, um, he's set goals, I think. So he's wanted to knock off this record. He's wanted not necessarily to score the goals, but to have an impact to take this team forward. And he knows how important his goals are because they mean achievement for the side. And you saw He's taken time not only to uh, make himself available and to say how important this is for himself in the media, but he's also created social media posts and used that platform to say and to give an indication not only to Kiwi fans but to fans of Chris Wood as to how much this means to him. So what record is next for Chris Wood? He's um, secured the goal-scoring one. Yeah. Is it the all-time appearances for the All-Whites? Oh, is that next? Yeah. Look, Vaughan Kovney's been knocked off. Ivan Vislich is uh, next uh, in the uh, crosshairs for Chris Wood. <laughs> yeah, I think absolutely. And um, not only that, but he'll want to keep up the scoring record that he's got. So I think it's 30 goals in 62-odd games. He wants to maintain that almost goal every second game average. Um, and that's going to be something that's important for him when he looks back at his international career, I imagine. Spoon, just before we get Logan Rogerson on the line, you would have played in fixtures like this. Uh, New Zealand teams up against island nations who don't have professionals at their disposal, who mm. basically pick from the local league. You know the discrepancy. We're up here, they're down there. How do you, how do you avoid complacency when you come up against teams like this? How, how do you avoid being anxious for that result? Because you know that if you return home and one of these teams has beaten you, or, or strip you of the opportunity to go to a World Cup, then fans, media, they'll be on your back. How do you, how do you cope with all of this? I think it comes down to the culture and the side. And the, one, the, 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 the thing that I saw was that this team is very confident because of they're, they're playing at a, a higher level week in and week out at their club, club environments. At the same time, there's that patience that we've seen on the field. We've seen that resolve. And that all stems from a culture that has been built within the Sir White side, which is let's stick to the process. Let's stick to what we can control and let's focus on that. But you're right, there is an anxiety. This, this tournament's very banana skin heavy. <laughs> uh, and um, the players will need to be really sharp and focused heading into the semi final and final because they are one off games. There's no second chances. Well, I like bananas, and uh, hopefully, our next guest <laughs> likes them too. He lo loves consuming them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. His name is Logan Rogerson. Let's head to Qatar and talk to the all white striker now. Logan, how are you? Hey, how's it going? Um, yeah, we're pretty. We're pretty sure results. Um, we had a, a tough game against PNG, first game, and um, 
but managed to get the result. And then obviously second game was a bit more convincing, but I think our performance was a bit better and I think that like showed in the, in the scoreline. And how satisfied are you with your own efforts? A couple of performances off the bench that you can be proud of. You, you're satisfied? Yeah, definitely. You know, I think any role that Danny gives me that's coming off the bench or starting from the beginning, you know, you kind of have to just go out there and uh, leave him up there um, on the pitch. So, no, you know, I come close in the first game, hitting the crossbar and then managed to win a penalty in, in the second game. So, you know, it, I can just do really, um, you know, do the job and uh, roles and responsibility that uh, Danny gives me. Just focusing in on that penalty for a moment, Logie, you did win it and we saw Clayton Lewis take it and score, but was there any question about you potentially stepping up? To be fair, I try to just stay down as uh, long as I can really to <laughs> try and convince the referee um, and then by the time <laughs> I got up, uh, Clayton's just standing in the middle. So so didn't feel you had the, uh, had the, the um, ability to take the ball off him, mate. But speaking of that, Goran's going to hit me up a, bit, a little bit later, uh, looking at it from a goalkeeper's perspective, I understand. But how much contact was there uh, on you, mate? Because it didn't look like there was much. You could have broke my ribs, I reckon. You reckon? <laughs> Solid contact, eh? I think you maybe made a meal of it, Logan. What, what do you reckon? Oh, to, to be honest, I don't know what he's doing. Like, he's caught the ball, then he's stuck his leg out. Like, I was nowhere near going to hit her, and then... Yeah, I just thought it was a little bit silly for yeah. the goalkeeper, but... Yeah. Uh, studs up at uh, rib height, mate, is never a good idea, is it? So, yeah, we're thankful that you're, you're available for the next game. Um, Danny's, I think, from my calculations at least, has used 21 players uh, in the first two games, mate. What's that been like in terms of the variety that you've been asked to facilitate? Yeah, it's been... It's been pretty um, hectic, to be honest, like with players coming in and, and players leaving. But, you know, every player that's come in and, you know, has done a real, real good job and it just it just feels like the whole team are on, on so like, especially the boys that are coming in, you know, they already kind of know, you know, what they need to do. And I think the team culture is like quite strong um, within this group. So I think it, that definitely makes it easier, um, you know, for these new players to come you know, it already seemed like they know what they're doing type thing. And what can we expect from you guys against New Caledonia, mate? It's not a dead rubber, but you've already qualified for the semis. So how is this game going to be managed? Um, I'm not sure, to be honest, but my feeling is that um, obviously some of the new boys that have come in probably, you know, try to get some minutes in for them and... And probably for the boys also they haven't played as much, probably like myself maybe, to, to get run. But like, like uh, I don't really really know too much, to be honest. So like I said earlier, like whatever role and responsibility that Danny gives us, I'm sure the boys will, will give it a good crack against New Kelly. How much of a distraction is Group A? Because um, obviously you've got to play somebody out of Group A. And we've seen Vanuatu effectively ejected from the tournament because of COVID. You've got the Cook Islands who are likewise doing the same. Uh, is that a distraction? And, and also, how, what are the, the precautions like for the All Whites to make sure that you are fit and ready and available for a semi final and a final? Yeah, well, like, to be fair, I don't think we're worried too much about what's happening uh, in the other group with COVID. It makes things a bit challenging, but I think all we can do is uh, make sure every game that we play, we get three points, and um, and whoever we get in the semi-final and final, I'm sure, you know, we're gonna want to do a great job. And I think the staff here and have got all the precautions in place as well. And you know, we're pretty we're pretty good here with you know um, safety of us. And I think the staff the staff do a very good job of making sure that you know, we're, we're all safe and, you know, we managed to kind of keep, keep in our own, own little bubble because I think, you know, would hate for something like COVID to ruin our chances of, um, you know, going to that intercontinental playoff. Yeah, I'd feel pretty ripped off. I don't know about you, Spoons, but uh, if we don't go through to that intercontinental playoff and, uh, I don't know, Solomon Islands does, not happy. I'll be gutted. Absolutely not. Um, 
and I think particularly with this group, mate, the likes of Logie and what they can do, the depth that we've got at our disposal is wonderful. So, yeah, I can't agree with you any more, mate. Hey, yeah. Logan, just before we let you go, uh, what's it like for you uh, after such a, a, a lengthy absence from the All Whites environment? What's it like being back in camp? Yeah, I'm buzzing. I'm buzzing, to be honest. I think it would have been five, five years. Um, it's another bit of a long time and, you know, when I got that call from Danny for the last tour and even to be involved with this uh, World Cup qualifying was, um, you know, was was a good feeling because obviously I'd been gutted every time I kind of watched the All Whites play from home. So um, to be back part of it, um, yeah, just obviously buzzing and, you know, I try and take it on the field. It's like when I do get my chance to, you know, even 10, 20 minutes to just leave it all out there type thing because yeah you just never know when it's going to be the last time I guess and you know I just hate to take playing for the always for granted knowing yeah obviously I've been away for five years so I definitely know what it's like to not be involved so yeah well, it's good to see you back in the environment and doing well in the all-white strip uh, I think the the last time I saw you was um geez it would have been just over a year ago and um Seamus Martin uh, a man who is well known in New Zealand football circles was trying to take his shirt off one button at a time. Um, that was an that was an interesting night, my birthday. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was. It was. No, Seamus is a is a good friend of mine, and um, yeah, no, I don't remember too much of that <laughs> night actually. But. <laughs> They will leave Seamus's behaviour for Seamus to deal with, Logan. That's uh, <laughs> yeah. that's very politically uh, avoided, mate. Well done. Yeah, good stuff, Logan. Thanks so much for joining us on the Kiwi Football Fix. Maybe we'll see you down at the Viaduct again uh, sometime soon, eh? But in the time being, go well in the OFC World Cup qualifying and uh, in a week's time, we'll be through to that Intercontinental Playoff. Cheers for your time, bud. All right, cheers for having me. Cheers. Yeah, a very interesting night, that one, with um, Seamus Martin, uh, one of the co-hosts of Between Two Beers podcast. Um, I don't think he got very far, Spoon, because um, the concept came in late in the, the evening, and, of mm. course, we're, we're all old. And yes. so I think we maybe got to one or two buttons, yep. and then we were done. Well, that's probably good for everyone else in the bar and the Auckland Viaduct that night. But it seems to be a quite a remarkable <laughs> evening because it's been brought up on a yeah, number it was of a good night. It was a good night. Anyway, let's uh, consign that to the past where it belongs yes. and talk about Logan Rogerson. Um, yep. What have you thought of his efforts so far? Um, I mean, he spoke about the header into the crossbar. He's been, he's been a live wire in the opportunities he's been given by Danny. Absolutely. And I think... Uh, the key thing for me is the maturity that he's shown. So he had his opportunities overseas in Germany after the time with the Phoenix. He uh, had to come back to New Zealand in Auckland City and then realised he needed to go back overseas to put himself in the shop window, so to speak, for uh, this All Whites team. And he's mm -hmm. done that and he's doing really well up in Finland. So I think that's the background story to him and his contribution in the All Whites so far. And you're right, he's been such a willing contributor off the bench. He's shown that spark. And I think he's been part of a group of players um, that have done that for Danny. And for me, the likes of Ben Old, who we missed out at the top, uh, he was a really important cog in the wheel coming on. He, he really got in the pockets. He got his half turn on and played in the likes of Logan for a number of occasions. So he stood out for me in that game against PNG when Logie was so unfortunate uh, not to score. But that's what Danny will want to see. And I think in terms of the front line as a whole, he'll probably be saying to the boys, look, done really well but let's still be focused on being more clinical let's refine this let's put games away earlier which will be important because obviously it means they get to manage the games but with the workload still in front of them they want to be able to put that foot on the brake or go down to third or fourth uh, so second or third gear uh, for the games to make sure that they're ready to go for the final away from the all whites in Qatar at the moment there was an announcement earlier in the week regarding outdoor gatherings and the, the, the restrictions have been alleviated and removed. And it means that we can have fans back at the football. And who knows, maybe the Wellington Phoenix can return from Australia and play inside the, the Capeton Sky Stadium. They could play at Eden Park. Keep going. What, what, well, they could play uh, in Christchurch. They Absolutely. They could play in Nelson. They, uh, uh, They're playing in New Zealand. Let, which let's is just get thing. them back to New Zealand. Yes. When's it likely to happen? Not sure at the moment. There hopefully will be some sort of indication from the club yeah. that this um, will happen before the end of the season. We know that there's been games that have been earmarked and the club's been really open about that. They are aiming for home games. Um, How soon? Don't know. 
uh, it'll be it'll be in April, Goran. April. Yes. Okay, so that's just next month, right? It's uh, well, it's before it's a the week end, before the end of the season, mate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but oh, look, uh, I think it's for the club to confirm and hopefully it'll be able to happen soon. We know that they're aiming for it. Um, we'll all be here to support them. Obviously us here at Sky Sport, but also the New Zealand public. Got to get out. Got to welcome these boys home. Clayton Lewis, the hometown boy from Wellington, has only played one game in Wellington for the Wellington Phoenix. He's been there for, I think, two plus seasons now, Grant. Yeah. So that gives you an indication as to the sacrifice that the players have made, how abnormal it's been, and then also how important it is, it is for us to welcome them back. Yeah, oh, I don't think there'll be any issues welcoming back the Wellington Phoenix. We'll turn out in force and uh, they'll get the job done as they did against Mark Rudan and Andrew Durante in the first game back last year. What does it also mean, this uh, easing of restrictions for the All Whites and that intercontinental playoff because, look, sad sacks like me love the commute from Auckland to Wellington to watch the All Whites try and qualify for a World Cup. So can we can we strip that of Qatar later in the year yeah. and bring it back to Wellington? Well, we've gone from the Auckland Viaduct to the infamous Air New Zealand 9am flight where I think it was absolutely <laughs> rocking. So I'm imagining you were on there as well. No, man, I drove. You, dro you drove? Yeah, it was a road trip, me and my mates. Oh, brilliant. Three times over. Uh, nothing. It means nothing for the Intercontinental Playoff, unfortunately. So FIFA's changed no. it because of the uh, issues around COVID. Uh, they have gone for a really conservative approach and they're going to base, I think it's the two Intercontinental Playoff games in Qatar at the moment. There is some suggestion that could be moved potentially. We don't know at this point. Um, but they'll be played within 48 hours of each other and they won't be a home and away leg. They'll be a standalone fixture, which is going to be interesting because the temperature will be quite high in mm. Qatar at that time. It will be. Well, that sucks, doesn't it? Um, dreams are free, right? Road trip's still on, mate. Oh, so I just go down to Wellington anyway? Yeah, go on. <laughs> <laughs> so hang on, I, I drive to Wellington to watch the All Whites play Panama in Qatar. Romanticism of plenty, Grant. Okay, all right. Hey, just before we go, um, how are we going to give away this beautiful San Diego football <laughs> shirt? Signed by Landon Donovan, Nico Boxall and... Kyle Adams, the other kid. How are we going to do it? I reckon we just pick the score for New Cali, mate. Okay. That'd so be the way I'd like to do it. Pick the score for New Caledonia. And uh, while you're picking your score, you just hashtag Kiwi Football Fix on Twitter and on Instagram. And uh, the winner of this lovely San Diego shirt will be revealed next week or online. I don't know. I'll have to talk to Rodrigo about that. Maybe we just do it on uh, Facebook or something. Absolutely. And just, just quietly thinking about uh, any potential uh, ties that we might have, mate. I reckon anyone who picks the same score. So if we've got a multiple of uh, correct scores, we put it down to you and you get to pick the winner at random. OK. Or you could just um, maybe supply more of these shirts. <laughs> <laughs> we do have a couple. So yeah, stay tuned, mate. Um, we'll be making sure they're in good supply. Jacob, great to see you on the Kiwi Football Fix. When am I going to see you next? I'm not, no, that's a, no, 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 I'm not falling for that because that's a backdoor question of potentially about which coverage we've got coming up. Oh, okay. Oh, just no, no, maybe no, no, you tricky. want to join me down at the viaduct or something and uh, have a couple of quads. I'll, f I'll phone Seamus now, mate. <laughs> maybe remove the top button of your shirt <laughs> while you're at it. On the hour, every hour. Spoon, great to see you as Thank always. You. And uh, as for me, I don't know when I'll pop up again, but uh, you can guarantee I'll be on the Kiwi Football Fix next week once the All Whites have won the OFC World Cup qualifiers in Qatar. Touch Until wood. then, yeah, touch wood. I don't think this is wood. This is kind of like a... Uh, it's, it's good enough for me. It's good enough for me. Until then, we'll catch you next time on the Kiwi Football Fix.